Fox's The Five is going to talk about Obama's State of the Union speech and specifically the part where they honored the heroic veteran and get ready to cringe because this ain't pretty. And uh, what a perfect guest to mm. pick. Yeah. Um, a little bit of uh, this is the moment. The moment uh, of the whole speech is an hour and eight minutes, and, and that was the moment. But the problem is it, that came an hour into the speech. For me, he could have gone earlier. He should have hat tipped the military earlier. Even if he wants to go towards the end and do something like this, which is very common, I get it. Not just uh, Democrat presidents, Republicans do it as well. But remember yesterday, my one more thing was Ronald Reagan. I spent a ma massive amount of time looking back at prior State of the Unions with Ronald Reagan. They all do this type of thing. It's fantastic. It's patriotic. I'm all for it. But afterwards, Reagan came back and started talking about, he kind of concluded the State of the Union. You know, it's President Obama right after this said, good night, God bless America, you know, and that was it. And so he almost kind of used that really heartfelt patriotic moment to say, good, to say good night. You know, it was Ronald Reagan that started this with a guy named Sosnick who, who jumped into the river after Air Ford and right. saved the, uh, the stewards. Dana, it wasn't always this way. If you look at the 70s with the Vietnam War, veterans weren't always treated the way that they are now. So it was actually a highlight for me anyway, watching this, uh, this hero stand up and getting the applause. And, and I do think we're in a different era, even with Republicans and Democrats, when it comes to veterans and supporting them on this one. I think this was this event, this heroic man was was somewhat disconnected from the limp litany of grad school garbage that came before. And it felt like it was placed at the end of the speech to armor against scrutiny that you end it right then and there and that everybody walks away thinking about this amazing hero and not how lame the president's speech was. And I mean, I'm, I think I'm being fairly mild about this, but if you read Nick Gillespie's piece mm -hmm. in Time magazine, he is absolutely disgusted. For me, the speech was the least majestic speech I've ever heard. It was like a gender study student giving a speech on the quad, trying to get signatures for a unisex bathroom in a local Starbucks. It wasn't presidential, it was pubescent. He was running for student body president of Epcot Center. <laughs> but I have to say that, How that do you really it, was, it, feel? Was, it was very moving at the end, but I felt like I was being used. Yep. Mm -hmm. I felt like I well, was being used. Well, it sounds like you feel like, like Corey was being used as a human That's, shield from criticism yeah. from people but he who he deserves the, the accolades, and I think Eric is right that the way it was, it it should have come back to something, and, and it didn't. And yeah, yeah. See, it's amazing that now these guys are concerned about the troops being used. Where the hell were you under George W. Bush? Where were you at the beginning of the Iraq War, at the beginning of the war in Afghanistan, at the beginning of the so-called War on Terror, which actually net increased terrorism and increased the number of terrorists, members of the Taliban, and members of Al-Qaeda? Where were you? So it's not that George W. Bush used uh, the troops to get oil out of Iraq and used it to get control of a vital region in the Middle East and toppled somebody who we used to actually be allies with when he was at the height of his atrocities. No, it's not that. It's not that President Obama is using the troops in that way either. No. It's that President Obama used him for the speech. Okay, I don't know about you, but if I was a troop, I would much rather be used to get an applause line at a speech than used as cannon fodder. Yeah, I know that's a harsh way to put it, but guess what? These guys, they're totally missing the point. I mean, this is what I said directly after the speech, too. I said, yes, he's being used. And the problem is everybody in that room that's cheering sent this guy to war for no goddamn good reason. The only reason any American uh, brave young man or woman should ever be sent into harm's way is if there's a threat of imminent attack against the nation. That is it. We didn't have that in Iraq. We didn't have that in Afghanistan, okay? I get it if you wanted to send SEAL Team 6 around to do a, a, a bullet to the head of Osama bin Laden. Got it. No problem. If you want to do covert missions to just go target Al-Qaeda. Yeah, I got it. In, a, in an intelligence-driven, you know, criminal justice kind of way, I understand that. But blowing $7 trillion in the budget with Iraq, that's insanity. And that's what we did. That's what we're going to spend by the year 2053 when all is said and done, not to mention the amount of money we wasted in Afghanistan. But they totally missed that point, totally missed that point, but they want to say, oh, he used him for the speech. Now, uh, a couple other points here. Uh, Greg Gutfeld, calm the fuck down. He has what I like to call Dennis Miller syndrome. It's where to make up for a lack of actual intelligence, you use big words. You use big words and these really, uh, you know, 
weird concepts. You say something that you could say in five words in about 37 words, and you try to trick people into thinking you're intelligent. Even though you're using big, big words, but the idea behind the big words is dumb. Okay, so we all we can all see through you. Anybody with a brain can see through you, Greg. Uh, and he said it's the least majestic speech I've ever heard. Calm yourself, man. See, with these guys, it just comes down to hate Obama first. No matter what, anything Obama does ever is the worst thing ever. I mean, that's like a, that's like a toddler. That's how a toddler thinks. And uh, finally, to I don't even know her name. What's her name? Tantaros, I think it is. When she said, "Well, gosh, I was I was happy at least because it seems like vets are treated in a good way." And I, I'm not sure in the past that with the Republicans and the Democrats, they they always treated them this great. Oh, you fucking idiot. There's 57,000 homeless veterans right now. 57,000! And because this bitch couldn't do any goddamn research before she got on air, uh, her attention span is like, Nat. I see a gnat in the air. I mean, she's basically like, oh, there's an applause line, so I guess all the veterans ever have been treated perfectly. No, th just because they're applauding at the State of the Union doesn't mean that you know, there's not a gigantic backlog at the VA, which there is, okay? Doesn't mean that there's not homeless veterans, which there are. Doesn't mean that more veterans committed suicide in one year than actually died in Afghanistan because of the, of the levels of PTSD. But that's Fox News in a nutshell. Spew uneducated opinions, do no research.